Ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths Most Wanted, which I've been kind of slack on uh, in the past few months, so I'm getting back into it. Starting with something that I think is easy, but clearly since someone requested I do this craft, uh, not everyone thinks it is. So, usual standard disclaimer for Most Wanted, uh, this is mostly for the newer players who need help. Uh, with certain craft and how to figure out strategies to deal with them. And From the Depths is a very individualistic experience in something that basically different people have trouble with different craft. And so this particular craft, um, I can imagine giving somebody a hard time if they ain't ready for it. I did a horrible job of Englishing that sentence. So anyway, this is the Harlek. This is a medium difficulty Onyx Watchcraft. And I have to admit, when I first um, saw the suggestion for this getting a most wanted, I'm like, really? You're having trouble with this? But remember, who are we to judge? I remember having trouble with, well, I don't know, any number of, like, actually not that difficult Onyx Watch craft uh, in times gone by because I didn't know any better. And then several thousand hours later, I learned better, and then, you know, you get better at it. So anyway, what the heck is the Harlek? So the Harlek is a pretty standard son uh, Sonic Swat, Onyx Watchcraft. Uh, in many ways, it's got those uh, standard pattern cram turrets and all that stuff. Boxy uh, design, lots of spare uh, space in between it, so it goes floaty float. And uh, the description kind of says it all, really. So you go to the X menu, look at the Harlek. The Harlek was based on the concept of a tank on water. It was built with enhanced hull armor and improved defenses, allowing the Harlek to act as a mobile shield that moves in close to the enemy and bombards it with powerful mortars. Ignoring the imposing Harlek as it maneuvers its way directly into the line of fire is nearly impossible and foolish if you do. So that's basically the, th the job of this thing. It is a bullet sponge uh, that gets in your face and uh, blows you up if you let it get too close. So. What are the strengths of this? Well, you'll notice that it has uh, a bunch of cram cannons pointing in all directions, so um, uh, flanking this thing doesn't really work that well if you've got stuff that's e even remotely susceptible to crams. And uh, if I activate my X-ray vision, you'll see that uh, the crams aren't huge, uh, but they are HE spammy, so they do blow chunks off you. Let's just uh, see the damage numbers on this thing. So, yeah... Close to 25,000 explosive damage is uh, not to be sneezed at. It's not exactly um, the most devastating kind of cram you can have, but these things do hurt if they hit you. So that is worth noting. And it's got these wee mortars right here. So uh, they're not... These are not the most impressive mortars I've ever seen, uh, but they do do over 20,000 explosive damage. And that... Uh, the beer, I think this the reduction of shell speed to about 50 meters per second is uh, mostly something to make this thing... I don't know, it, there might be guidelines on Onyx Watchcraft uh, to keep them uh, in line and balanced and stuff like that. Because uh, if you make uh, the muzzle velocity of these things 150 meters, they actually have a pretty impressive range. So maybe they just didn't want to do that. So yeah, the Tetris is... Um, uh, for people who know Cram Tetris, it's like, eh, it's not terrible. It is 3D Tetris, so, so yeah, it's not, not the worst, not the worst, not the best either. How is this orientated? But yeah, so it, uh, it has Ducker. Uh, it's got, it's a bit tanky by Onyx Watch now, it's, and by tanky, uh, what that really means is that it's full of empty space, so... Uh, as I've mentioned on the channel before, like, air gaps are actually weirdly good armor, simply because it means that anything that hits the outside over here uh, doesn't really reach uh, all the way over here, and it's got redundant compartments and all that jazz, and it means that uh, shaped charges, and hash in particular, really doesn't do much, because um, uh, the fragments uh, pop into this airspace, and they scatter, and they don't do much at all. So big air gaps are kind of tanky, and this thing is full of them. So you just, you glide through here, you'll see here, there, and everywhere, uh, they're just big gaps. Uh, especially from the front, and this thing uh, has quite a short range. So, let's see here. Combat distance is 145 meters, so we'll try and keep this distance from the target. It doesn't retreat, um, it does retreat when it's too close. Interesting. 
So, yeah, it also has, uh, and this is kind of unusual for freaking ambulance helicopter. It is, uh, and this is kind of unusual for Onyx Watchcraft, but most of them don't have this. It has decoys, uh, big ones at that. These are large missiles, and they've got a radar, target simulator, and a sticky flare. So, this thing is actually reasonably uh, missile proof in the sense that it'll distract them. Uh, quite well, and it chucks these things up in the air uh, quite frequently. So the reload on this is about 14 seconds. And uh, let's see here. Does it have the ACB right next to it? Is it clever, clever? Nope, it isn't. But let's see here. Yep, it's named, so presumably there is an ACB somewhere. Somewhere over the rainbow. I can't find it, but it's probably there somewhere. Ooh, and it has uh, heat decoys. That is, well, heat and sonar decoys. So the thing actually has uh, quite a decent amount of active defense for an Onyx Watchcraft. So, worth noting. And yeah, it also has a lambs in here. So if we go, where is it? So here we have uh, not a gigantic lambs. It is a, what is this, we got, right here, we got a two Q-switch lambs. So it goes zap, zap, and it uh, it pops a lot of the, like, big things, like missiles and gram shells and stuff like that. Um, you can't just, you know, whittle this thing down with the odd gram shell or missile because it will snipe them straight out of the air. And I will demonstrate right that uh, right now by spawning in something that does exactly that. Where is my friend the Banshee? And uh, da, 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 there's the Banshee. Boom, boom. And so yeah, getting close to this thing, uh, as the Banshee just demonstrated, is not the super best idea you can have. And yeah, that missile volley wasn't annihilated, but uh, it definitely was, uh, the brunt was taken off by it, so... This thing it is kind of a problem if you only have small to medium sized craft available to deal with it. And as you can see, those decoys are doing work right there. And sonar decoys are also doing their work by pulling them onto this uh, uh, front section that has heavy armor in it. So this thing really is designed to kind of uh, drive straight towards the enemy and uh, kind of get hit in the face a lot so other things don't have to. And I keep forgetting that I have that cram sound effects mod uh, installed. And uh, the Banshee is having a bad day, as you can see here. And funny thing is that uh, now that crams are faster, and they've been that way for a while really, uh, you can't just roll around at uh, 30 meters per second and expect to dodge them. So yeah, this thing is like, um, it's tanky. It is not the tankiest thing the Onyx Watch has. And certainly not as close to tanky as you can get in From the Depths, but uh, it is an unexpectedly hard nut to crack. That being said, there are a lot of vulnerabilities with this thing, is that um, one of which is that you'll notice that uh, all the uh, turrets on this thing are deck turrets. They're all 100% above deck, and all their expensive, vulnerable, squishy bits are hidden behind uh, very few layers of armor. So. Look on the front here, that looks like one, at most, two layers of metal in between uh, all these expensive, crunchy uh, cram components and, like, you know, the big hostile outside world. So these turrets get disabled pretty darn easily and um, they get knocked out uh, fairly quickly if you have anything that can get through one or two meters of metal. Uh, since this thing doesn't really have anything in the way of... Uh, uh, close in weapon defense. This thing is kind of uh, useless against anything that moves fast and I can demonstrate that by having a little plane here you know, to spawn in the diamond's wasp, which was it really isn't gonna do much uh, Whoops, that was wrong We need to spawn in the diamond wasp on someone else's team. Also, turn off repair tentacles and spawn that in like in hoods. Whee! So yeah, the crams are trying to do stuff, but that ain't gonna work. Except it is gonna work because the freaking planes fly directly over it, so... Wasn't my best example. Why are you aiming over there? Oh well, this death spiral um, says is a good example. You know what? 
That's what I get for uh, talking smack, you know? That's what I get for, for chucking shade uh, at this thing. So, not incredibly good at dealing with stuff that moves fast and erratically, which this damaged plane is actually kind of uh, demonstrating quite well. You know what's a better example of this? Uh, this. So if we go over here, something that doesn't fly in a straight line, like an idiot, uh, this torpedo bomber. Which trundles along at over 100 meters per second, and yeah, the crams can't really do anything, and this thing doesn't have any missiles or ABS or anything, so... It's really not going to be able to do anything against anything that can keep its distance and move fast and erratically. You can see that kind of sine wave all the way over there. Uh, just, it's, uh, it's ain't going to happen. Why is my binoculars not working? Oh, that's because... It's because I wasn't on the right thing. We, You are going to miss non-stop. So, yeah... And also, the mortars on this thing, uh, remember it fired at the Banshee because it was just close enough. The mortars really don't do anything against anything that can move because the muzzle velocity is just way, way too slow. And honestly, I'd suggest fixing that. Like, a 150 meter uh, muzzle velocity works pretty well for mortars and allows this thing to get its mortars in the game a lot more quickly, I'd say. Although that, like, that is a lot of gun- that's 10 cram- that's 10 cram turrets all aimed at the same place. Oh look, there's a torpedo. I wonder where that came from. Uh, so yeah. Also, you'll notice that there's drills on here, and I suspect, now that I look at them again, that this is a kind of very half-hearted defense against ramming craft. Except, they're not really good at that, and this thing even has the wrong kind of AI for this, so... These steam drills are a complete waste of time as far as I'm concerned. I've talked a lot of smack on steam drills in the past, and that's because they're terrible. They're really kind of useless, and um, there's basically nothing they can be useful that isn't better done by something else. And yeah, this thing doesn't even... Well, firstly, this thing keep maintains distance at around 145 uh, meters, so it doesn't even get close enough to use them. And also, it's slow. So, top speed of this thing is around 13 meters per second. That is slow. You are never going to catch anything uh, you want to ram uh, if you drive that quickly. So, yeah, this thing is not ever going to catch anything. And since we can demonstrate that right now, let's demonstrate something over here with a ramming craft. Uh, let's see. What's the pulverizer again? No, that. Not that. Thrasher, Sinitor, Rasser, Ripper, Buzzsaw. Are you smart? Uh, not really. You are going to... Nope. Okay, so let's see if the steam drills do anything. They... Nope, but the crams are. Jeez. Yeah, so as you can see, like those steam drills, I think if they're meant to, uh, if they're meant to do anything against ramming craft, uh, they're not really going to do much. Although the mortars might actually do something, ironically, and it won, but not because of the steam drills. It's <laughs> just that was pure tankiness and uh, firing, uh, like school buses filled with explosives at point blank range. Oh dear. So, how do you survive this thing? Well, I've already dropped some hints on uh, how to survive this thing. One is keep your distance. So, uh, keep your distance, don't let it get close, uh, because crams really hurt when they get up close. Uh, even though the mortars are terrible and so are these drills, uh, keeping your distance allows you to dot them better. And you can use active defenses. So, I'm going to spawn in uh, on an enemy team because I'm cute like that an old craft of mine that just so happens to have a bunch of active defenses, which is also cheaper than the Harlek. So the Harlek is around 263,000 materials. Uh, this thing, I'm going to show you now, has lousy firepower. It's called the Tower Croc, and, but it does have a decent land system and missile interceptors, which means it can pop crams no problem. And... Yeah, like, its own missiles aren't going to get through the lambs, but uh, it does have, and I have recently upgraded it, uh, with uh, arm-piercing shells with a bit of heat on them, so they disable the turrets pretty easily. 
And also, I should do this. Why would, why, whoops, sorry, handicap. Pretend that didn't happen. And zap, 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 zap. And that is why small crimes are not a good idea, ladies and gentlemen, because they do not get through the zap, zap. And if they can't get through the zap, zap, they can't do the bang, bang, and the boom, boom, and that's bad. So, yeah, like, um, and how do you kill it? So, basically any kind of ducker you want, really, so long as it can pierce and uh, reliably get through uh, one or two meters of metal. So that's dealing with the turrets and most of the hull, apart from that one hard point uh, on the front uh, that has that layer of heavy armor in it, which you can bypass pretty easily. And um, if the land is giving you a problem, you can just overwhelm it with just sheer HP. So, yeah, like, let me give you an example of that. Sheer HP, why not? Uh, this thing I'm going to show you is um, a little, quite a bit more expensive, but um, I think it'll be able to work just fine. So where is our friend here? Grampus. I will never get tired of showing off Krampus, because Krampus makes me happy. So, uh, this is the old school Krampus with too many uh, cram shells. Uh, but I somehow doubt that that lambs is going to uh, zap all of them. Nope, it isn't. So, if you spam enough, is the rule, uh, you will manage to get through the defenses. That's kind of just how... Uh, defenses work. They always have their limits. And this lambs isn't the most terrifying in the world, so it will do, it can be overwhelmed quite easily. I say quite easily, fairly easily. The The Krampus is uh, like over 650,000 materials worth of flying and cram, so that's perhaps not the best example to show, but it was the nearest to mind. And if you... Okay, let's turn that off again. One way to... Well, you already saw this, really, but uh, let's show it again. We... Where's the thing with missiles? So... Let's spawn in the flying cyclone. Why not? I'm not sure why this thing is even here. So right here we got some missiles, and these definitely have signal processors on them. Which is why they just ignored the decoys and just blew things up instead. And that one also did that. So, yeah. So, uh, if the decoys are giving you problems, just stick signal processors on your missiles to evade detection. And that's basically it, really. Harlek, in my opinion, isn't really that dangerous. But I can definitely see it surprising someone quite unpleasantly. Uh, who is used to Onyx Watchcraft not having any form of active defenses at all. Because this thing does. And so, yeah. Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Support me on Patreon and YouTube membership if you like. It really helps. And there's fun perks in it for you. Thank you to all my current supporters. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Most Wanted. Is the Cyclone actually... Yeah, it is. It's actually getting beaten up. This is an even fight. Who would have thought? Good on you, Alec. Farewell.